Oh, I feel so home suddenly. <laughs> Ooh. Speaking of home, so this weekend, uh, so we got uh, my son a bike. And uh, we were out. Like with like uh, training wheels or not? Well, like with a stick, ah. right? A stick in the back. Mm. And um, he learned to uh, ride himself. It is like that proud dad moment. So I never cry at movies. Never. It's very rare that I shed a tear, but I was really close. I was really close Did to you? shedding a tear. Really, really yeah. close. And then um, when we were done, we were only doing it for like me running behind him for, what, 10 minutes? And then uh, in the evening, I was like, why are my legs so sore? <laughs> Out of shape, really I've, out of shape. I have shape. the same thing. My my little one, he's like trying to walk now. Yeah, and he's really <laughs> upset if you don't help him. Yeah. So it's basically one one of us is like walking with him like this, like yeah. everywhere, you know. And yeah. it's like you're in this crouched position. And it's like okay, sure, this or that. But it was also like then later, I I sat down on the couch and I got up and my knee like make this huge crunch. And I was You're searching old. for arthritis. <laughs> You're later old. Than, yeah, exactly. I'm You're old. So that's the funny thing. My kid, he calls me like old man. I'm like, yeah. You get a bit subconscious. No, but also, get... I mean, no hair. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything is like busted uh, teeth. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> but I mean, I guess we could predict that you're gonna grow old. I guess you're gonna predict that, right? Um, today we're gonna talk about some other things you can predict, um, and or not can just you? listen to my amazing sick ways. Or can you? Or can you? Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, some can't. That's for darn sure. We're going to talk a bit about predictable revenue. So I remember uh, story time way back when I started here. It said predictable revenue on our website. I was like, isn't that a bit snake oily? Isn't, mm. isn't it? But actually, you know, we've been through that mill uh, together, actually, with some predictable revenue. So we're yeah. going to get into some of the mechanics today. And we kind of pivoted the episode a little bit to say hey let's try and get a bit tactical here let's not be you know up in the clouds and and be super strategic about it mm. let's give away some very concrete steps that you can actually take yes some so and and really this is going in direction you know uh, we can we can talk more about sales math and like <laughs> hey these are these are the things and don't forget and do mm. this and do all of that thing um but uh, when when I sometimes talk about this, um, you know the the reflections from from people hearing this are more about the how do you actually then execute this? How do you live this? You know how yeah. do you deliver to the board? How do you deliver to the budget? How do you deliver to your team and so forth? And and some of these things are almost tactical in order to do it. Some of these things are comms problems actually. Mm. So that's why um, maybe kind of going through this today is um, is the right approach. Yeah, and I think it was also sparked by a, by a trip we had to Sweden where we talked a bit about some of the stuff we've been through. Yep. And one of the things were really... <laughs> yep, some of the stuff we've been through. And uh, I kind of wanted to get into one part of that conversation that was super interesting because I hadn't, I hadn't realized what was happening in the background. So just some context for the listener. I was heading up marketing. You were heading up the commercial team. So obviously you were privy to some, let's say, pain and information that I wasn't, which is kind of interesting, right? So I wanted to get into a bit some of the, the problems around not being able to predict fully mm. and not being able to control revenue production fully. Yeah. So the thing is, obviously, everyone asks you to predict that stuff. Mm -hmm. If you really think about it, a sales forecast is, the, you know, it's to a degree trying to um, help the same problem. It's yeah. like, tell me the future. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put some tarot cards down yes. and figure out what's going to happen. Um, and um, and obviously, when you go through this planning process, budgeting in the in the beginning of the year, everyone is like super uh, ambitious and, yeah. and and wants to achieve things. And then, obviously, in the you know later in the year, some of that is is kicking you in the butt a little bit. Um, and the the main issues with that is really twofold. One is um, loss of investor trust. Yeah. Yeah. You told them you're going to do X. You're not achieving it. And then there's a question mark on next year plan, kind mm. of these kind of things, yeah. or on you if you're the CRO or the RevOps leader or whatever it is. Um, and the other thing is obviously trust um, with the team. Yeah. So you tell them, hey, we're going to do all of those fantastic things. We're going to get to, you know, wherever. Um, and then you don't. Yeah. And that then obviously erodes uh, trust also with the team, right? So you have basically kind of both of those uh, stakeholders to manage. And I mean, it's really, this is the entirety of your stakeholders. Yeah. <laughs> 
basically. <laughs> it's a double whiplash. Maybe maybe you have a wife or partner at home or something <laughs> like that. But uh, you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where's that commission check, yeah. Tony? Um, but um, you know, besides that, those those are those are all the stakeholders that you can have, right? Yeah. And and you know, talking a little bit today on you know maybe how to kind of go about it and manage this. Um, that was kind of the idea, right? Because yeah. if you the, the predictable revenue piece, it does sound sometimes snake oily. If I, I think some other people might have read um, predictable Reven revenue by Aaron Ross. Yeah. Um, I had a conversation with uh, Dave Kellogg about this book, and actually from his perspective, he was not like this is not about SDRAE. Mm. He he talks about it, or Dave sees it as this is the industrialization of sales. Yes. That's that's how he thinks about it. It goes away from this magic AE, you know, does a big deal and yeah. everyone is like, you know, celebrating him to nope, it's a production line, it's a factory, you yeah. need to do those things. And if you don't do them, kind of you, you, you're effed, yeah. right? Um, and uh, um, that then, you know, when you have it in this like really nicely predictable setup or in this, this factory kind of setup, guess what? Yeah. It's predictable, yeah. right? Then you can kind of get into this thing and... If you take it away from some of, we have some wonderful yeah. background noise, by the way. <laughs> um, if um, if you take it away from this magic approach of the one-off and the you know lucky sales guy at the end of the quarter, uh, and and put it into the system, then you get this predictability, right? So yeah. this is kind of the, I think the overlap between those two concepts. But so we've talked about this a lot. Um, I think what we haven't talked about is kind of how to actually go go about it. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to get into because, I mean, we've we veered, uh, you know, over the topic subtly in some of the other episodes. We talked about forecasts, you know, great stuff. You can predict, you know, this quarter, but nothing else. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty much a self-fulfilling prophecy anyway at that point in time. You know, a bunch of hidden assumptions in the plan, which you kind of also talked mm -hmm. about now. So what is the solution here? If you want to <clears throat> if you want to start getting a bit more predictability into what you're doing, if you want to be able to put forward the number both to the investors and the team and actually be able to hit it rather than this, oh, we thought you were on the unicorn path. Yeah. Not anymore, yeah. crossing <laughs> you off the list, right? <laughs> yeah. how, how, how do you go about it? How, how do you do that? Um, yeah. And, you know, let's let's not get too high up in the clouds. Mm. So this whole unicorn thing and all of these pieces, kind of let's keep it, you know, down to earth. I think number one is, yes, there's a bunch of math you should be doing at the beginning of it. You will be forced into a planning cycle. You won't yeah. have anything to, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of constraints and one of the constraints you will have is that there will be a budget for the year and there will be a number for the year. Yeah. You, you cannot do anything about it, whether you're RevOps, CRO, nothing, yeah. right? And sure, you will have a, a, a word to say and how this is being put together and uh, and you will be able to tweak the number up or the mm. number down or, you know, all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, you will be locked into these 12 months. Yeah, yeah? There's very little you can do about it. Um what you can obviously do in order to improve the validity of this thing, use data. Mm. Yeah, sure. And we have said this many, many times. Use some data, use some common sense, use some logic, use a model, blah, blah, blah. Right? All of these things are obviously important in order to get to something that is your today's best guess of the future. Mm. Does that mean that the future is going to turn out exactly like that? The answer is obviously no. Mm. Uh, but you won't have a chance but to commit at that point to yeah. you know that trajectory at least. Right? And yes, people will be upset if you're ten percent above or below or twenty or whatever. Um, but that's just the reality of it. You you will have to lock in this thing, yeah. right? Um, the other thing you will need to do is, and that's the other constraint. You will need to give targets to your team. Yeah, yeah. Um, Some high ones. Uh, and the <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and the thing is now. Um, as you give targets to someone, you yeah. know, putting it in quota and commission and so forth, you're starting to uh, lock in your plan more and more. Yeah. Which can be good and can be bad. Yeah. Um, if you think about the incremental giving someone quota, that's kind of okay, right? And I think this year really is a is a story for everyone that has crossed the 10 million threshold. I think yeah. if you're before that, it's a different chaos game. is the yeah. reality of this. So kind of really kind of thinking about it like that. Um, giving someone a quota and AE giving someone a quota, that is kind of okay. You yeah. know, it's uh, you can still play around with, uh, you know, not hiring more AEs or letting that one go or hiring mm. a lot more. You can still play around that quite a lot. So that's that's okay. I think the difficulty is giving your VP sales, VP marketing, VP CS targets. Mm. That's difficult, right? Because as you do that, um, 
you're starting to, uh, you know, you obviously want that permit to add up to your number yeah. or to the company number, right? Uh, or the board number. Yeah. And you can have different numbers, by the way. That's totally fine. A lot of people do that. Um, but as you kind of, as you lock your VPs in, uh, you basically kind of solidify some of these things, mm. right? Um, and and those are really the two main constraints you need to work around. It's yeah. number one, the budget, uh, which has the cost and the target, and then your team communication, right? Kind of that's that's the world you live in. And now you need to start figuring out, okay, if those are really my only constraints, how should I actually go about it, yeah. right? In the, um, on the On the planning side, one piece that I actually forgot to mention is really the, um, yes, use data, and number two, you will probably have a couple of things where you want to improve something. Mm. Um, and when you know when when I used to kind of do that kind of work, what I try to stay away from a lot is what we refer to as uh, magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so magic is everything that your CFO things uh, sh we should just be getting better at. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's, this typical conversion rate, ACV, blah blah blah, GRR, net retention rate. All of these little numbers that just kind of nudge up just a little bit. Mm. Um, all of these things stay away from touching those as much as possible, yeah. right? If you do, which many of you probably will, because you know you might have not, you know, any other choice. If you do, you should totally follow the rule of seven times ten equals a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So again, what was that rule? Um, it's really if you have seven ten percent improvements throughout your funnel. Mm you will basically reach 100% improvement throughout. Yeah. yeah. Because it's compounds. That's yeah. the idea. Um, so really, what does that mean? Uh, play small bats. Mm. Don't place big bats. Yeah? And if you then play small bats, ideally have a team behind it that also executes that. Yeah. Right. So really kind of as you do that, as you use uh, data and as you use non-magic ways to kind of stitch it all together, you will end up with a plan that you probably can execute. Yeah. Right. And... And this is a difficult thing to navigate because it sometimes feels like it's unambitious, mm. right? Um, and I think this is something where um, you and the CEO, or the CEO, and you know whoever's kind of involved in this, you just need to have an honest conversation about it. Where you say this is where we think we can get. Yeah. You know what? We we are not party poopers. Yes, mm. let's let's agree to this bigger target. It's for us. It's not about you know the commission check at the end of the day. You know, let's let's figure out how we can close that gap. But uh, having clarity on you know where you think you can get and um, and uh, what you maybe need to say yes to, there can be a bit of a gap to those things, yeah. right? But have that honest conversation around the table um, in order to really kind of set yourself up at least a little bit yeah, for yeah. for this predictable revenue piece. But I think it's such an important takeaway, right? Because so I see this many times we're blinded and it's almost a fallacy by these big bets we want to make because it's so attractive it's so appealing like mm. we're gonna go to the states with this completely new solution and it's gonna be amazing and we're gonna do all these things mm. and you attach too many things onto it the times we've exceeded target in marketing guess what we didn't do any of that we took the most boring things the most obvious fixes found like 15 of those they didn't take a lot of time to do But once we completed all the steps, it started yeah. compounding, right? And then actually we started overperforming as a team yeah. um, coming from a, a dark period, right? So yes. I think that's that's super important. So, you, I mean, your point is really you're going to end up having a gap pretty much no matter what you do in the planning. Yeah. You need to work I'll, a I'll bit. get to that in a little bit, right? So so there will be some some gap, you mm. know, maybe not, maybe there will. Um, but if you... If you again, if you try and tweak those CVRs and ACVs too much, yeah, you will, you will, you will mess up, like mm. for sure. The next tactical tip here is try and give targets to your leaders on a quarterly basis. Okay, yeah? so you you sit there with a the plan for the year, um, and uh, there wouldn't be anything easier than to just give those plan numbers to your VPs and be like, okay, you know, done. They have it now locked in. Now they need to execute, right? I didn't do that, actually. And this is, you know, me talking CRO role. Um, but the reason why I didn't want to uh, do that is because um, some of that stuff kept changing mm. as as it as it does. That's that's part of reality. What, the targets or...? The um the underlying pieces. Mm. So you know sometimes we're starting to call it rebase lining a little yeah. bit, right? Um, 
But for example, it could be that um, your hires are veering off. Yeah. It could be that some of the processing steps that you thought should be increasing uh, are actually decreasing. Yeah, yeah. It could be that something is happening on the churn side and so forth. And you can now kind of take one out of two perspectives. One is like, well, those VPs just need to deal with it, mm. right? Um, or you can say, where in the chain do I actually want to um, have the buffer? Mm. Uh, because you will always have a, I mean, uh, other than the 1%, yeah. you will always have a gap between what you're executing and how you're executing and to this like plan that was set, right? Yeah. And the board is kind of measuring you. And you can now decide, do I want to have that gap between my VPs and their directors or to have that between the directors and the AEs yeah. or wherever you're going to go with this? Um, or to have it between you and the board. Mm. You can you can decide where you want to have it, actually. And I decided that for um, operational purposes, it's actually best to have it with me, mm. right? So uh, I took the hit on maybe then the commission side of, yes, boo-boo, I didn't <laughs> get you know <laughs> the commission payout. Um, I took the buffer there, but it was also very clear with my VPs and said like, well, if we manage this in the other direction, I will take the buffer in the other direction, my friends. Mm. Uh, so it's a, yes, here's a target and we need to achieve it. And if we're under it, then I'll take it on the chin. If we're able to go over it, uh, that doesn't mean that I only kind of put your compliance to my target. No. Your compliance will go where your compliance could take you. Yeah. Right? Um, and it's kind of this, this is kind of how, how I also build trust with it, with my direct team. Yeah. In terms of like, hey, you know, I take, I take the beating. Um, but that then leaves you guys to operate uh, very closely with your directors, your directors with the managers and so forth, right? Yeah. So really, uh, you will end up with a, a gap somewhere in the permit because the board target will never move. Yeah, yeah. They will just be like, I don't care. Deal with um, and you now need to, you need to be tactical about where you want to place that buffer, right? Mm. I decided to place that buffer with me, which then gave me the opportunity to uh, hand out targets on a quarterly level to my VPs, yeah. right? And those targets now could be adjusted to what was happening, what was going on. Um, and at the same time, uh, as as kind of those targets then reset to a degree on a quarterly level, we were then also able to put that number that I gave to the VPs onto dashboards that were visible for the whole organization, yeah. right? And those VPs now were responsible for um, the actual resources that they had, and the non-magic way of processing those resources mm. in order to get to a revenue target, yeah? Yeah. which completely aligned them to you know the SDR and the AE and everyone kind of and the CSMs and everyone that was kind of on the table. So they were fully aligned around that. And guess what happened? Because we didn't use magic in this approach, we ended up hitting those targets a lot, mm. right? A lot, a lot, basically. Um, and again, this quarterly approach, it also gives you a understanding not only how many hires you have, but also how many opportunities are those hires able to, uh, you know, um, generate, and yeah. to, you know, to kind of turn into customers, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So we basically, you could, you mentioned like, oh, it's, you know, just a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Self-fulfilling prophecy is great. <laughs> you want to have a self-fulfilling prophecy in your, yeah. in your quarterly target setting. And in our case, we had, um, and that's why you're saying that, we're like 30 to 45 days of sales cycles. Right? Yeah. So at the, let's just say a week or two before the quarter started, we already knew a lot yeah, how the yeah, next yeah. quarter is going to pan out, yeah. um, especially because we're in the range of like four or 500 opportunities a month or something like that. Yeah. Um, so uh, we basically kind of knew very, very much what was going to happen. The conversation with the VPs on which targets they're going to have was very, very straightforward. It was yeah. math. Yeah. We, it wasn't a bothering or something like that. We were like going back and forth and, you know, being all upset and playing this whole negotiation game. I was like, hey, this is what it was. This is what you kind of need to achieve. Yeah. Here, here are things that, you know, messed up. In some cases, for example, we had one team that went from 12 conversion, uh, 12 points conversion rate to six yeah. in a quarter. Yeah, yeah. And I said, hey, my friend, I'm not going to give you that six. Forget about it. That That's, that's not going to work. Uh, I'm going to put it at 10. Yeah. You know, you need to figure out how to kind of close that gap. But I was, I was, um, uh, I was obviously kind of open to give some wiggle room here. Right. Yeah. Um, and that thing whole taken together, 
uh, generated tons of trust yeah. and goodwill and uh, positive momentum and all of that stuff with the team and, you know, the, the whole thing around it, right? I think it also creates a sense of what truly matters. <clears throat> when you've done the rebaselining, you have a pretty good idea of what are the things that needs to hit so whether you're marketing a sales, you know, well, we need to be able to produce this amount of opportunities per SDR marketing. We need to produce this amount of opportunities from these channels. And that becomes a focus point, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's super powerful. One question for you, though. Not everyone is going to be the CRO yep. listening in this case, right? They're going to have maybe a CRO or uh, they're going to be VP RevOps, whatever the scenario. How do you go about then s recommending, hey, we should consider a quarterly cadence for targets instead how do you go about that yeah um i think it's really um i think the way you need to think about it is almost like what are you optimizing for yeah. what is it what do you want to achieve do you want to um and this can be a conversation that revops has with the cro mm. it's like do you as cro want to uh, offload all the pressure to everyone around you so they then keep offloading the pressure to everyone around them and so forth is that what you want to achieve and then you know that's okay. Mm. You can you can totally do that. Or the alternative is um, you you go a little bit smarter about it and try and basically what you're trying to achieve and uh, do here is you're trying to align the v you know each of the heads of the departments mm. to everyone in the department. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise you're basically handing down this um, you know discussion of who should be actually carrying the gap. Mm. Um, if you if you hand the the full number to the VP of sales, the VP of sales now needs to be like, mm -hmm, okay, am I gonna give the full number distributed to my directors, um, or am I gonna want keeping the gap? If if he or she sends it down to the directors, the directors are like, okay, uh, am I gonna now increase quotas? Yeah. Um, or you know what what are we gonna do in order to kind of offload me? So really the question is. Who is gonna Who's gonna have the gap? Yeah, you it's, it's not. It's you know that's 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 the question. Who's gonna have the gap? Um, and if you ask the question like that, um, I think, uh, I think it's a terrible idea to just you know hand it down. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's that's what I think. Don't let shit roll downhill. No, exactly. Um, <laughs> and it has one downside. Obviously, you're kind of creating a bit of a cushy, cozy environment for everyone. Kind of you know, it's like oh, you know, hire didn't happen. Mm. Sorry, <laughs> those five guys left. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> right. Um. So you need to you need to manage through that obviously as well. Um. You know, then plenty of examples on the marketing side. Yeah, as well. stop it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so you need to manage through that as well, and um, uh, I would manage through that um uh, in ways of um running the operating cadence. Yeah. By the way. So the way I did it then, especially on the hiring side, creating like very like strict, uh, you know, processes around the hiring piece. Um, we had by so fortnightly, we had uh, one session with the VP for uh, AEs yeah. per region. Who's on the track out? Who's on the track up? You know, what do we need? What's your quota on the street next quarter mm -hmm. going to look yeah. like? How are we going to manage that? Um, ah, okay, we have a risk here. You now need to go mitigate that risk and or come back and tell me the guy's out. I mean, to kind of replace. Yeah. Um, and uh, then the same thing on the SDR side, um, basic performance review on a higher level to be like, okay, those guys are coming up for promotion. They're basically dropping out of the team in a good sense. Yeah. Uh, here are people that are in ramp up. Mm. Uh, here are people that uh, missed now twice. They're basically on the on the opposite end of promotion. They yeah. might be dropping out for the the worst reasons. And then, okay, if these folks are moving up and down, how many do we need to actually backfill? And yeah. how many people do we have interviews right now? And kind of uh, do you know run that pressure on that level actually with them? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and the same thing then with um, marketing and CS, yeah, right? Yeah. You can you can have weekly cadence. That's why we're kind of advocating for this demand gen cadence, right? Yeah. Uh, and this is what I did in actually the other shop I worked at. Uh, I had my um, VP SDRs, my uh, VP marketing, um, and I think that's it, actually, in that yeah. case. And actually, kind of my RevOps guy was also in there. 
uh, you know, let's go through the numbers. Where are we behind on the numbers? Why are we behind on the numbers? What are we going to do about, yeah. you know, being behind on the numbers? And <laughs> what's going to be the impact numbers. of that? Yeah. And it's like, uh, okay, SDR is behind. Can can you do more on this side, right? You know, yeah. shifting around some budget. Like, ah, oh, you're late in hiring. That means I have like half a half a salary, actually, yeah. uh, to put into some other channels. Hey, marketing VP, do you see something where we could use that to some degree, right? Yeah. Be tactical, we'll push on this end, right? I think, um, uh, yeah. I think, sorry to interrupt you mid, mid trail, but one interesting thing you said, obviously it's a lot about the numbers, but you also had the people, how mm. they're performing. And I heard this story, I can't remember the company. They were a big, you know, uh, three digit AR company. But on a C level, they would monthly have a quadrant where each, you know, C CMO, whatever, they would actually have their team. And there was obviously a bad quadrant to be in as mm. a team member. Yeah. And then there would be actions that would need to be taken to lift that person out of the quadrant. And uh, next month, if the person was still in there, then the accountability kind of shifts to the CMO or whoever now. It's like, so what's the plan now here? Because yeah. you, you do need to manage the, the talent you have in the shop. Again, if you're dealing with this as a factory mm. and you have Greg, we don't like Greg, standing on the production line. And he, you know, only produces uh, five laptops, but mm. he actually needs to do 10 and he gets everything he needs to do it. But it's not happening, right? Yeah. So I, I kind of like that dimension as well. No, it's I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I think about the stack ranking kind of approach there. It's like, a, it's a little bit this. Can be um, a bit harsh. No, no. So there, there are some good solutions to it, but uh, I don't have a kind of a really strong kind of uh, opinion on this. But basically, um, instead of giving people just a big number, help them, you know, yeah. and manage on the ground actually. Yeah. Right? Kind of that that kind of creates creates another kind of side to it. Um then the other thing obviously and this is you know have specific focus on those seven ten percenters. Yeah. Um and try and figure this out. At the end of the day, those ten percenters, those things working out, those are the ones that help you as the RevOps or CRO person hit the hit the full target. Yeah. That will be what it will be. And I can tell you from experience, um, many times none of this actually ends up happening. Yeah. And this is not a, oh, Tony, you were just a bad executor. I can tell you it's extremely difficult to kind of achieve those improvements and oh, keep yeah. them and so forth. And I think, by the way, this is why I love PLG. I think in PLG you can achieve some of those improvements, actually. Um because it's all systemized, it's all a computer, uh, <laughs> and you know things just happen. And you should tweak this thing up, and then they do it. With people, it's not like that. It's like no. you can you can have oh you know what from now on we should be doing the demo like this. Guess what? No one will do it tomorrow like yeah, that, yeah. right? Um, so so you know those those achievements really hard to kind of gain and to keep. But I think there's also a nuance to it, right? So I said I told the story around you know marketing exceeding target by taking some very obvious things and addressing them mm. at some point there weren't any left right there weren't the oh this part of the website mm. is broken mm. let's fix it then it was fixed you know nothing nothing left and then it obviously becomes more risky yeah uh, so so that's kind of part as well and then the last point right hey the team loves you you you're, you're hitting you're not getting paid you're basically on your way out yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know what is then the co um, connection to the board again right because you need to kind of cover this gap i think um I think the trick is to uh, sure, you know, say yes to the plan and mm. have your caveats and your ideas about it. But um, as you will have meetings quarterly, give them a clear quarterly update on how this is going and uh, where you expect next quarter to go. Mm. Um, and um, on some of the challenges maybe you're experiencing and you know what you're doing about it and so forth. But the trick will be that... Um, to the board, yes, you will be behind on the annual plan. Mm. But to the board, and by the way, the boards are, you know, used to that. <laughs> that's the, you know, that's the standard for them. It's because Just, they try and create like a magnet. So they, they go, okay, we want them to be here. So we're going to give them that number. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a thousand percent sure. There's there are things around it like this, but it's also the, you know, everyone is gung-ho in the beginning of the year. And then the board mm. tries to, you know. Anyway, um, they are used to people not performing to plan. Period. Yeah. Um, so really, if you can tell them at least that this is the number you're going to expect to hit this quarter and then you end up hitting this number, that is really powerful, yeah. right? Um, and I think people can understand and appreciate that uh, if you try and forecast a whole year yeah. um, in a volatile environment that you're going to get it wrong, mm. um, but that you even forecast the next couple of months and get it totally wrong, I think that's stupid. Yeah. And I think what, what will 
crush you much faster if you come out of a, a weak Q1 and then act like you're going to rebound in Q2 and hit the plan, even kind of catch up on the plan. Mm, yeah. um, that's where then suddenly you're not going to be looking at a 10% gap. Suddenly you're going to be having a 50% gap. Yeah. And if you're then as, uh, you know, uh, not careful enough and put this number to your VPs and put this number on a dashboard and, you know, raise quotas and add more AEs and do all of that stuff, you can see how this whole house of cards is going to just fall apart. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, um, so, you know, don't do that. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't do it. That's it. Okay. So we don't like magic. We don't like magic. And I think the other big takeaway is uh, figure out figure out who uh, who should be um, covering the gap. Yeah. That's a trick, actually. Yeah. Um, and what you really, really, really want to achieve, you know, maybe until 50, 100 million, when the, the you know, executive VPs below you basically... Uh, you know, little CROs themselves. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the time we then give them that thing. Yeah. Um, but um, but until then, try and kind of keep the quote unquote operational guys as as directly connected to the yeah, actual yeah, yeah. operational folks. Yeah. Otherwise, it's um, otherwise you're just uh, uh, handing the problem to someone else. Yeah. So Tony, are we gonna do some uh, more guests soon? Well, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> we've been ditched today but that's fine it happens we'll uh we'll reschedule we'll reschedule but we no, will have more guests yeah yeah so this is this special thing mm. ain't gonna be so special anymore no it's gonna be a you know scheduled spe special <laughs> i can't talk anymore <laughs> <laughs> we're recurring gonna have more special, special. we're gonna have more special. special yeah they're gonna yes. be recurring that's what it is if any one of you has a great idea who should be on the show by the way yeah uh, ping Mikkel or me yeah. um, and um, then let's kind of talk about it like a magician or your brother-in-law yes. who likes yeah. something like chess or whatever yeah. we'll figure it out. or if you just want to talk to me and maybe Olaf will come to the GTM live every Wednesday 4pm CET uh, we actually launch it now as a podcast so people that missed it can listen to it mm. we're gonna have a video library up all of that good stuff yeah it's coming together uh, let's go Cool. Well, thank you so much, Tony. Thanks, Michael. Thanks Everyone for listening. Bye. -bye. Bye.